You may already know this, but I've been using Maya for about nine years now as my main tool for everything. Primarily animation, but also everything else I need to do. And we did this video once before with Blender, and since then I've been having a blast using both Maya and Blender. Depending on what I'm doing, I'll mix and match and try to come up with fun workflows. But today, we are jumping into Unreal Engine 5. We're gonna open up the Valley of the Ancients project and just play around, see what there is to see, and just get a sense of this whole real-time game engine stuff. I have been living under a rock for the last two years as everybody else has been learning Unreal Engine and making all this cool stuff in it, and I don't know how to do any of it. That changes today. If you are as new to this as I am, Unreal Engine 5, you should absolutely watch this video. I'll have a link to this page down below. These are my computer specs, which is a pretty beastly computer, so we're gonna see how this performs on the 3090 and everything else I got going on. But with that, let's dive in. Wow, that looks really good. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, first question, how do I move? Can I move like normal? Hey, yeah, okay. Oh, what did I click? Oh, shoot. Wait, I think you can right mouse click. Oh, I can move like a game. That makes sense in a game engine. Ah, whoa, what the heck? Oh, you click on the camera and you can see through the camera. That's cool. Fire looks great. All right, let's just back. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look how big the world is. Are those like cloud? What are these? The cloud mask gener- Oh, so it's like generating. All right. Oh, look, I can see the end of the world. If I loaded more, if I right click, load selected cells. Will that give me more? I can't even imagine having this much geometry in a 3D scene. The fact that it's all like lit and rendering. I mean, I feel like I'm going to sound like an old man. Like, wow, back in my day. I don't know. Futures now, old man. Any other 3D software would, I feel like would struggle. I just feel like they're not built for this type of thing. So this is really cool already. I haven't even done anything yet. Let's find out. Oh my God, it worked. Wow. I was kind of thinking like, are these matte paintings? Like these are, oh my God. Oh my God. These are actual assets. Interesting, because yeah, I guess a matte painting wouldn't make sense. It has to still be in 3D space, so you have like backdrop. Oh, and it shows me where they exist, like in the world space. So that must be just like a lower level of detail. Or it's not level of detail anymore, because Unreal Engine 5. I don't know, it's something like that. Who knows? Let's let's play. Let's see what happens. All right. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is looking really nice. Look at the little subtle motion of things. Okay. Drone. Gimme. Ooh. Oh, well, this is sick. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold up. We're going to zoom in on this middle, the middle of the screen. Look at that. There's like a, there's like an atmospheric, like turbulent heat distortion. This is sick. Look how much geometry is loaded in. I mean, I mean, we see this in games, right? Like I'm, this is kind of, uh, I don't want to sound, I have to, I have to like <laughs> phrase this very carefully. Oh my God, look at that. Indirect lighting, the global illumination. That's nice. Here's the thing. We, I play a lot of games. We all have played some games. And you often see big sweeping vistas like this. But this is different. This is a ridiculous amount of detail, both close up and far away. Like this is, there's no like, you know, 2D cards in the background that are snapping in and out of level of details focus. Like this just looks crazy good. So this, I'm guessing, is what? The Quixel Mega Scan library? Is that what they're using? The like the rock scans? Because this is great. All right, let's go ahead and just return. And it says to move, OK. Nice animation. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Again, this is something that people who work in games are probably really used to. But like, as someone who's only ever done, like I've only ever learned from like the movie feature pipeline side of things, or even a little bit of TV, you don't make your stuff in your software and then play it at the same time. Like this is, cr this is so cool. Yes, eject, detach from the player controller. F8, okay. Yeah, okay. Ooh. That's spatial audio though. Wait, 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 left and right? Oh my God. I don't know if you can hear it in your headphones or your speakers, but like my headphones have all the 3D stuff for their gaming headset. It like absolutely knows where it is and it gives you the audio spatially like behind and around you so you can actually edit it. That's crazy. And look at the lighting. Because this is the part of the demo where I go to the dark world, right? 2,000 years later. Okay. That's sick. As a heads up, that loading transition, I cut it down. It does take a really long time the first time you run it but apparently it's like five seconds after that. I'll test that later. This is sweet though. 
Oh, it looks by campfire. Same assets. Interesting. So it actually is the same stuff. Really cool looking. Oh, and I'm running now. Hold to walk. All right, we'll go cinematic. Sweeping shots. Look at that. Look at the detail. This is so... Wait. Oh, look at the feet. Look at the feet. Look at the feet. Oh, the feet. I'm looking at the IK right now. Look at where the feet placement is. It knows exactly where the ground is. And it adjusts. Like if I stop her on this rock, will her foot go on the rock? Uh, <laughs> okay, that one's a little weird. Wow, look, look at that. I can never stand on this rock. That's so cool. Look at that. That's awesome. Shoot, hold. Oh! Look at that. Hold up. Do you see that like rainbow chromatic aberration? That's sick. The effects on this are... Oh, there we go. Oh, I must have shot through the, the loaded geometry. Oh, that debris looked really cool. I wish I could rewind. So yeah, if you haven't watched the demo, like you haven't watched the talk on this, there's a whole bunch of like technical stuff that goes into calculating, like changing her animation procedurally based on the height of this object, where she lands, how much she rotates, all these different things. Oh, and look at this, look at this. The world building. This is like a little bit of a preview as to what's about to happen. It's like the world building of this scene. Do we got anything else? Look at how cool this is. Look at how like nice that geometry looks. All the detail. What is that? Is that the shadow of the of the smoke on the ground? We haven't talked about that. Look at all the fog. Hold up. Actually, let me come all the way back here because I don't know if you guys were. I wasn't paying attention enough to like call it out. Look at all the smoke like across the ground. The fog. There's so much in here. What is that? Is that an asset? Can I click it? Oh, oh. That's like the live smoke volume, I think. So good. Ah, and there's our friend. All right. Oh, that's all hand keyed. That is so cool. That's amazing. What happens if I don't move? Woo. That's so cool. All right, now before I like beat this robot, because we're about to beat this robot, um, make no mistake, I want to eject. That's so Oh my god, look at the lighting. Oh, the little sparks, the particles. Bruh. Look at that. I love this. Look at that animation. And there's that whole IK thing that we're talking about. The whole that little that little lean, right? That whole little lean is procedural. It targets the player's location at the beginning. So all this hand keyed. And then bam, the keyframe animation stops, and then all this body motion right there is driven. I love the fingers. Like, watch this. Like, this little... And it just stops. That looks great. Whoever animated this. Let's pause. Right there. Actually, let's get the impact. Let's get the impact. That's so cool. And all these little things, they're not even sprites. They're actual little pieces of geometry being individually lit. Yeah. Does she have facial expressions? She does. Oh, look at that. Oh, little molten pieces. Those are cool. Oh my God. Oh, no ground is even like liquid. Oh, whoa. Look at that. You've got like liquid rock, like molten rock right there. And as it time goes on, it looks like it, it like hardens that. Oh my God. Look at the detail on this helmet. This thing is so far away from the character and yet it looks this good. I guess it's because we had the little cutscene, So it actually is like you don't have to swap. You don't need like a cutscene version and then like a, a it's all just an engine. It's just it just looks that good. That's cool. When you look at it, it looks like it's inside. I think it's all just shader magic. Because the moment I enter. Yeah, none of it's actually there. 
That's really well done. Look how cool that, I mean, that really looks like there's depth. I just want to, I just want to see the wireframe. Can I see the wireframe? I, I don't know how to do anything. Let me close that. Ancient content. Characters. Echo. No, that's, that's the, that's her. Animations. Oh, that's cool. All of her animations are in here. Oh, that's cool. Ah! Oh no, what did I do? I hit escape. <gasps> no! God dang it. Okay, so trying this again. This time I'm not going to hit escape. Let's go back to my little portal. Now you get to see how fast it is now that we've done it once. Let's see how quick it is the second time. Okay, real time. How fast are you? Now that we've loaded all the, abs the assets in there. We'll fade back when complete. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's... World better. <laughs> Let's just blow this dude up now. And because I don't want to do the whole thing all over. Oh, wait. <gasps> Eject. Yes. Look how cool that is. Oh, the little pieces of geometry. Yeah, I'm pausing. Okay, there's little rocks. Oh, the music. It's still going through the whole audio thing, even though I paused it. It'll probably get quiet for a minute. Look at that. There's little bits of geometry actually bouncing off of him. It's a real, it's a real physics simulation. Oh my God. Did you see that? These little rocks and these little pebbles. Now that might be just like, oh yeah, it's a physics simulation. Like, no big deal. Like, do you realize? Like, we're supposed to be in the camera right now. I'm supposed to be looking at his feet. This is what the camera sees. I'm supposed to be looking at his feet. And yet it's calculating like little pebbles bouncing off his back and falling to the ground. We can't even see any of this. Okay, so look at that. That is like, a, it looks like a 2D smoke asset. I think it might be a 2D smoke asset, but it's existing layered in 3D with other smoke assets that make it feel bigger. But you can see as I move around, it's sort of like a card. There's like motion in here. There's like different servos and stuff going on. Look at, like on the side of them, look at, there's like something right there. Look at that one. It's like hidden behind it. We can't even see it hardly. Look at that. Look at that turning gears. Ready, ready, ready. Here we go, here we go. Come on. There. Ooh, yes. Look at that. That's crazy. Okay, so we're gonna get all kinds of cool like camera effects. They're gonna blow up the screen. Well, that's... I'm pretty sure we just went through a magnifying glass. That's like how that feels. It feels like we're going through a magnifying glass. Look at that. You can see the sphere. You can see the spherical area of effect of that blast. And it's spherical. <laughs> spherical. This is looking sick. Look at those little distortion, distortion spikes. With live active refraction. This is happening on these little tiny spikes among everything else. Like with all this other geometry in the world, with like all this other stuff happening down here, his animation, like this is all happening at once. That's a cool frame. Grab that for a screenshot. Fantastic. I should go a few frames to go ahead and play. Oh, that was cool. Did you see that? That little animation of the, like he was like, oh, my hand. No, and he like closed it. All right, so that opens up this thing. So let's go ahead and shoot that now. Same thing. Oh, little streaks. Little streaks of things. They've got such cool variety of effects in here. There's like plasma spilling out of his like stomach cavity. These little diamond shaped molten things. Or sparks. These little flaming smoke pieces. Little sparkly bits. Well, since you can all watch the actual like demo from the camera view, let's go ahead and just finish them off. Not in the camera view. Oh, that was cool. All right, here we go, here we go. Ready? Right there. So that gives us the moment of impact. I'm gonna eject from him. Big old explosion, so my camera's like, Rah! I'll leave the camera view here, and then we'll hit play, yeah? Couple frames. You can see the glass exploding out. Little pieces of glass, wow. Is there refraction in these little pieces of glass? There is. I think there is. Be. I can't tell. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's just watch it. Oh, that was cool. It like shot with the velocity back. I feel like I've made this very, like I've taken this epic moment and I'm just like frame by frame. Bruh. I wonder if they, 
Man images. You know, <laughs> why would they? That's funny. Oh yeah, so there's like no ground under him because you can't see it. His feet are still, his feet are still like stuck on the ground. Because of course, like they're IK feet. Why would you, why would you animate the feet? You're not going to see them. Once his knees come down, you'll never see the feet again. So in case anyone's ever wondering, like, do I have to animate everything if it's off camera? This is one of the big differences, with, like big differences with movies and games is in movies, you only have to animate what you can see or anything that will like affect what you have on the screen. So like if you can only see your characters like top half, you don't have to animate the legs and the hips but you might still need to animate the hips a little bit to get the, like, the lower part of the body because it's still affected, you know? But you don't have to do the feet. Games, you generally kind of have to do everything because you can look at the character from all angles, so you can't really get away with anything here. But with this, make an exception. I do not understand how everything we just saw was happening in real time, completely like lit, looking like perfectly rendered. There's no noise. There were effects, there was lighting, cloth dynamics, there's hair. I think she has hair, right? Does she have hair things going on? Kind of, she has realistic hair. I don't know how that works though, if that's like simmed or not. All this geometry loaded and running smoothly. Like, remind me why we have to render frame by frame? Uh, effects, can I just drop in effects? Oh, portal explosion. Whoa, how do I trigger it? How do I have it like loop? Can I do that? I don't know what you're supposed to do, like how you can affect the thing. Look at the dust. You really get to make a decision now. Like, do you want to dive into Houdini, make some cool sand, which like, there's a reason for all of that, you know, but like, actually that's probably in, that's probably from Houdini. Well, no, this is from Epic. This is their demo. Maybe it's not because you can make that kind of stuff in Houdini and then bring it into Unreal and then have it run, but you could probably also make it in Unreal. I wonder, I have no idea how this works. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Oh my God. It works. Oh my God, do you see what I'm seeing? Do you see what's happening? Okay, so what we're looking at right now is to the right of the rock on the ground. You see how the shadows change? So here's the thing. That is what global illumination is all about. When I worked at DreamWorks, the first thing I got assigned to, the first like project I was working on was Torch. It was DreamWorks' proprietary lighting package that they developed. And as far as I'm aware, they don't use it anymore. We were, I was teaching lighting. That was like my first thing. And it was a PBR renderer, a points based or PBR points based rendering stuff. Uh, I don't know how to explain it very well, but basically just think that like you had to generate points for everything you wanted to do. Like you'd have to generate, if you wanted to render diffusion, render specular, render bounce lighting, things like that, you had to specifically render and generate lighting points for that thing. This wasn't compositing. This wasn't like making a, a, a diffuse pass and a specular pass, an ambient occlusion pass. It was like a weird points-based lighting compositing that eventually would lead to like the real compositing. It was weird. I don't know how to explain it. I tried all kinds of different workflows. I did this for months and months. I worked on trolls and I did a lot of stuff like that. And one of the things that I noticed at the time was that every combination of of rendering that I could do looked really CG. It looked really like computery and like it looked like a CG movie. There was one thing that I did every time that was the key to making lighting look realistic, that took it from looking like a CG computer generated world and took it to making it look real. And that was bounce lighting, indirect lighting, the global illumination that I've been talking about here. This is how to test to see if this has global illumination. As far as I'm aware, this is how I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, so we can tell that this purple light is emitting light down onto this rock, down the ground below, and onto her. Easy, that's direct lighting. Is this casting a purple light down onto this rock and then bouncing that purple light back up off the rock and, you know, tinted with this orange color? Is that casting to the bottom of this other thing that we've added to the scene? I don't know if this is the best way to test this out. It's bouncing down, bouncing back up, and we're getting the bottom. That is our global illumination. That is our direct or what do you call it indirect lighting i didn't realize i could keep this like live and active when i was doing all this look at that if i move the rock it'll live adapt her foot placement now here's the big question what happens if i leave it there oh my god it's just there it's just there what happens if i go into the dark world with this here does it disappear no oh, no it's still there that's cool so my little rock would be there too huh oh yeah there's my little rock can i shoot it what Wait, 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 wait. Can I duplicate? Can I take whatever this is and duplicate it? This is supposed to be destroyable, right? Control W. 
I feel like I might be doing something I'm not supposed to do. I wonder if I'm going to crash Unreal. <laughs> it's like frozen right now. We still got the music, but I can't do anything. Okay, well, I have I have frozen the scene and that seems like a good place as any to wrap this up. Unreal is ridiculously cool. I have no idea how to do anything. Really want to learn this. There are a ton of resources I know they have available. They have an entire online like learning course thing with a bunch of free tutorials. So I'm definitely gonna have to dig into this. The one thing I want to try right off the bat is I want to animate some stuff and put it through the engine and just see if it looks good rendered. If that's even like doable, because I know that I'd probably have to export as Alembic, and I don't know if Alembic is nearly as fast as the FBX stuff that I think goes into here. No idea. If you enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments of what you'd like to see me do in Unreal or other software you want me to try. I want to do more just like exploring software, trying things, and just learning videos. So if you found this interesting, if you want to check it out, links to Unreal and all the stuff below. Let me know your thoughts, what I should do next. And if you did enjoy it, please hit this button and subscribe if you haven't already. Helps a ton with this, you know, YouTube sending my video out to more people. So thank you for that. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.